Now I want to look at what happens, what if the acceleration is always at 90 degrees to the velocity. So let me start with <coughs> the ball again. Now see so I have the ball down here and this ball right in the beginning this ball also has a velocity in say this direction. Um okay. I'll call that u. Okay, I'll just call it u. Now suppose that there is this that, that there is a, a force on the ball, a force that's at 90 degrees to the ball, and this force gives an acceleration a. Okay, so we, we are going to think of both of these as vectors, and they are vectors. Okay. And we can understand what happens. The acceleration causes a change in the velocity. So uh, uh, because of that, because of that, the velocity of the ball changes direction and the ball moves in a curve. Right? It just keeps changing direction. Now, think about what happens after after a time, right, after a time, the ball comes there. Now, this time, I'm going to imagine that the force somehow, okay, uh, we'll talk about how uh, afterwards, somehow, for some reason, the force on the ball changes direction so that the acceleration is now pointing there. Okay, the acceleration is now pointing in that direction, of a new direction. And the direction is pointing so that it is still at 90 degrees to the velocity, to my new velocity direction. Okay. Um, Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll just call that V, just to show that it's different. So the A here would probably, I, I should probably go call it a different A as well, but um, but with the same acceleration, the same magnitude, but different direction. Right, okay. So anyway, imagine I have this situation, right, where the, the acceleration is always at 90 de degrees, always at 90 degrees to the velocity. So the question is, um, if I can have such a, such a, a strange situation, what would, what would this curve look like? How would it look like? Well, we can just about imagine what happens. Okay, uh, let, let's try to follow the motion and, and keep imagining that. So maybe when the ball is here, see when the ball comes down here and and the velocity is now pointing in that, that, that direction, okay, then my acceleration change direction again and, and, and stays at 90 degrees to the velocity, okay, that will cause the direction to change some more, okay, change some more, and when the ball comes there, Okay, when the ball comes there, its di its direction is changed again, and its acceleration also changed to stay at ninety degrees to the velocity all the time. Now let's just take a leap of imagination. Just just jump and say right. Maybe, just maybe, okay, this is going to just go round all the way and close 
uh, and close back on itself to form a circle. A circle. Question mark. Really? Is it going to be really a circle, a, as in a, a perfect circle? Well, why not? Right? Why not? If um, I, I I think of it from uh, from the idea of um, change the the changing velocity because of the acceleration. Okay, we we can just imagine that after every short time interval, let's say this think about time interval that is very short. I'm going to use delta again to represent a small change. So the velocity u at first that's my velocity u okay now we have already seen the effects of having uh, the acceleration for a short time the effect is to add a little bit add a small change in the velocity uh, all right the acceleration causes a change in the velocity by the amount of acceleration times time by a small amount, so that the new direction, the new direction is this way. Right, is is the v vector there, which is this one. Okay, but after uh, it has changed the direction to v, I have a new direction for the acceleration so that after after another short time interval would add a little bit more in this direction okay so it keeps causing the v to change and every short time step right it causes the the velocity to change direction by the same sort of angle and by the same uh, amount okay because of this regular change it is because of this regular change that we can actually expect that expect to get um, a circular motion in the end now, my description here so far is quite uh, qualitative right, but without going to a proper mathematical uh, proof of this now i am going to take a jump i'm going to jump straight to a real life example and show you all right that and show you why right why the 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 final part of the particle is really a circle Okay, I'm going to make the jump now. Clear this off. Now, imagine, right, the ball again. Imagine the ball. Now, this time, I'm going to tie a bit of string to the ball. So, I'm going to tie a piece of string to the ball. Okay, and I'm going to hold the string at one end, say at this end there, where the cross is, and I'm going to swing the ball round and round. Okay. Just imagine that, I'm going to swing the ball round and round. Um, what kind of motion do I want it? Right, so let's say I'm swinging round and round horizontally, okay, it's in, in a horizontal circle. So. I'm looking at this motion from from uh, from the top. Let's say I'm I'm on the first floor, uh, or someone someone is in the first floor watching me swing this ball round and round, and and this is what they see, right? They see the ball going round and round in a circle. Now we know why in in this uh, this experiment. We know that uh, uh, the, the 
half of the ball has to be a circle for a very simple reason because because I tied it to a string all right the string has a fixed length so if I'm swinging the ball round and round it has to be a perfect circle okay assuming that the motion of my hand is, is not too big and that my string is quite long so it has to be anyway very nearly a circle so this this ball um, right um, at say at, at this particular instant in time right where the string is is here the ball would be flying with a velocity in this direction okay velocity there and after a short time uh, the ball would move maybe to here and the velocity will, will point there for example and, and so on all right now what is uh, what I know about this motion? What I know about this motion is that because this is going around in a circle and because I have a fixed string, I I know I am sure that this angle must be ninety degrees. The angle between the string and the velocity is always ninety degrees. All right, when it's there and the string is there, okay. This is again at 90 degrees. So I know that for a fact. Now, but let's let's now relate this to, to the acceleration. Where is the acceleration? Right. Now, it's easy to think that because I'm swinging the ball round and round, so the acceleration uh, must be there. All right. Because it's, it's easy to think that acceleration is in the same direction as the velocity. But in physics, we have to be careful. Acceleration um, is always in the same direction as the force, all right, regardless of what the velocity is. So acceleration does not have to be in the same direction as the velocity. Acceleration depends on the force that you give it. Now, in this case, in this case, the force, the force comes from the string because there's there's nothing nothing else pulling on the ball. It's, just the string okay so that's the only way you can have a force so and the, the only way the string can exert the force is by pulling along the direction of the string pulling along the direction of the string so because of that we must have or it's only logical that the direction has to be along the string because there's no other force okay, and acceleration always has to come from the force and it always um, uh, is in the same direction as the force. So therefore, we have just seen that in this ex simple uh, experiment, the acceleration is always perpendicular to the velocity. So therefore, this provides us with the answer that if we have a situation in which acceleration is always perpendicular to the velocity, the motion of the, of the ball must be in a circle. Okay. Now, this seems uh, it, it seems obvious that you know if we if we have a string on the ball and and we uh, swing the string with the ball round and round, we get a circle. Now, what is less obvious is if we can imagine a situation in which there is no string. Okay, in which there is no string. Now, let's say, okay, if we, if we imagine a situation, we'll learn about this um, later on. A, a situation in which you have, say, instead of a ball, we, we now have, say, an electron. An electron. Make this out. Electron. So this is a tiny particle, very light, and it has a charge. It has a negative electrical charge. Okay. Now suppose that we have a magnetic field, like you know the if, if I hold a piece of magnet above this this little that little bit of electron, and Suppose that this electron at the moment is moving with a certain velocity v. 
okay now when i hold a, a magnet above it the magnetic field right the mag magnetic field it could actually it could actually create a force that is perpendicular to the velocity all right that's how magnetic force works we'll learn more about that later so we have we can have a situation where we can create a force and, and therefore an acceleration that is always perpendicular to the velocity and the effect of, of this is that it would cause the electron to start changing direction okay but as it changes direction as it changes direction we have a situation in which all right the the nature of the magnetic field means that acceleration must always be at 90 degrees to the velocity so because of what we have already learned about uh, uh, about the string tied to the ball it means that the the the, the as a result of this this uh, magnetic field okay the ball has to go around in a circle okay so this is what we get when we have um write this down when we have an electron in a magnetic field t i c mag Magnetic field. 